Society. I'd like to introduce some of my board members. Uh, Ursula Bo Sr., our treasurer. Judy Knorton, one of our board members. I'm independent and Pat contractor. Pat I do bookkeeping. The for most them. important person, the bookkeeper. And uh, other, uh, some of our other members uh, could not attend tonight, but we have a full board of eight persons, eight very active, wonderful people. Uh, Follow along, our mission statement is to recover, maintain, and disseminate the record of Roosevelt Island's heritage. We fulfill the mission to collect artifacts, documents, publications, photographs on Roosevelt Island history and its inhabitants. We maintain collections and provide public access. We conduct educational programs, tours, lectures, exhibitions, and provide publications. The RIH has been recognized by multiple preservation organizations for our knowledge and expertise on Roosevelt Island's unique story. Our archives. We provide vital information to historians, architects, preservationists, scholars, and students throughout the world. Our archives include the largest collection of material on Roosevelt Island history from the 1700s to the present time. We maintain archives on projects that were built and many of those that were never realized. When Goldwater Hospital closed, we had a new mission. We preserved Goldwater. We could not preserve a 900,000 square foot building, but we preserved a lot of it. The RIHS now houses the architectural records of Goldwater Hospital. We could literally rebuild the hospital with 180 set, sets of architectural drawings from the day it was designed and onward. We catalog these by our intern in the summer of 2014. The rescue of these plans has led to the discovery of an entire segment of Roswell Island history during the era of WWPA and FDR. We discovered history that we had no idea took place on this island. Some of our recent outreach activities, we rescued, restored, dedicated the lamppost base that stood at the Manhattan side of the Queensboro Bridge. We updated our visitor's map of Roosevelt Island. We rescued artifacts and documents from Goldwater Hospital pre-demolition. Not only did we save the architectural plans, we saved signs, lights, all kinds of things. Ephemera from the building. We presented free educational programs on Goldwater, Roosevelt Island, New York City history. We sponsored island tours for residents, employees, and visitors uh, to the island and trips to local museums. What we need. The amount requested is $24,700. The projects are to support the visitor center st contract staff, tours and lectures on Roosevelt Island history, administrative support for the historian, and oral history of Roosevelt Island. The first request is $15,200. Over 35,000 visitors came into our visitor center in the year 2014. Our staff is knowledgeable and passionate about the island and its history. The visitor center is the first place where many individuals meet the staff and learn about Roosevelt Island's Historical Society services. Many fruitful relationships have started when visitors stop at the kiosk and discuss their projects. In providing maps and recommending custom visits, the staff encourages visitors to spend more time on Roosevelt Island, bringing business to our local merchants. Tours and lectures of the island. We're requesting $1,500. Programs on Roosevelt Island correctional and recent history. There's a vast interest in the correctional history of this island. Each program will include lectures and tours showcasing many of our historical sites relating to these topics. The benefits will to be expand the resident and visitors' insight into these aspects of our history. Administrative support for the island historian, $5,000. A part-time assistant would file, maintain indexes. Part of the job previously done by the intern, but lack of funds in 2015 meant the Historical Society could not hired an intern for last summer. The assistant would free the historian to respond to the increasing volume of requests 
on a more timely basis. Hiring an assistant is vital for the Historical Society to complete all projects, projects, thus enabling others to learn more about our amazing island history. Oral history of Roosevelt Island, $3,000. Capture perspective and experience of Roosevelt Island pioneers in their own words before aging and dispersing make it impossible to create such a record. The funds covered the project management and supplies for this project. Oral history would be a powerful learning resource for students, newcomers, and others. Transcripts, transcripts could be compiled into a book that the visitor's site center could say. What would happen if we're not funded? Without the funds, we would need to curtail, curtail our activities. In 2014, with the loss of two key grants, the Historical Society had to cut back on visitor center hours and was unable to fill a spectrum of full, I'm sorry, was unable to fill a full, a full spectrum of programs. Funding would enable us to develop our next book, which covers Welfare Island period through the 1960s and the beginning of Roosevelt Island today. Uh, I wanted to also add that since you asked all the organizations about grants, we did not receive our largest grant last year. And the woman is a met of us, an alumni of the Metropolitan Hospital School of Nursing. She went to nursing school here in 1933. She's 103 years old. I know she's still alive, but she decided to cut back, and that was a big loss for us. We also did not receive discretionary funds last year because of our city council change in council members. We were left off the list. We have applied for many other grants. We've received uh, two grants from the Chiefer Foundation, the Cranach Foundation, and we have uh, also been uh, received a wonderful grant from the Pomeroy Foundation. If you look at the picture of the church there, you see these beautiful brown and white signs in front of five of our six landmarks, and those were from an organization called the Pomeroy Foundation out of Syracuse, New York, and any landmark that's on the National Register of Historic Sites that's not an apartment house or a house, can receive one of these plaques. And we received five for the island, uh, and Ria did a wonderful job installing them by all our landmarks. And that was a wonderful grant from this foundation. We also received money from the New York City Landmarks Conservancy in order to relocate the landfill space to uh, the side of the kiosk. We requested funding for, from the New York Preservation Archive a project uh, to help us catalog our archives better, and we've had a survey of what should be done, but unfortunately they told us the reason we didn't get the grant is that our archives weren't decrepit enough and weren't falling apart. <laughs> Makes you feel really bad. So uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions about our application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Judy. Um, I'll, uh, I'll just start. I, I think you, you touched on uh, one of my key questions uh, in the areas that you've uh, cited. Let's see, uh, 15,000, 5,000, 1,500 for tours, 3,000 for oral history, for example, and, and that, uh, uh, in effect, uh, equals your total, uh, your total request. And as, as I understand it, uh, you, you haven't received uh, a significant amount in, uh, in grant money, is that? Not the last year, I mean, we, well, I can be specific with that. Um, we did not receive a, a $10,000 grant from the Mary Parker Foundation, the 103-year-old lady. Uh, we did not receive an expected $5,000 that we had been receiving annually from um, the New York Council, New York City Council, uh, during that transition where somehow we fell off a list. And of course we didn't receive, we anticipated at least $5,000 in our budgetary uh, preparation from, from public purpose fund, because that was the last amount that we had received, and we did not get that. So 
we did not receive $20,000. We did receive $3,500 from Shiva and two small grants from the Elaine and the Chronic Foundation. Yeah, uh, Chronic Foundation. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, your archiving effort, in effect, is on hold, is that correct? Uh -huh. No? Unfortunately, the papers keep coming, the histories keep coming, people keep calling us. We constantly have requests for information. I had a, an author yesterday who's doing research for the FDR. I have an author coming next week who's doing private research. And they do pay us a fee. If they are a for-profit organization or an author, or an organization that is going to profit from our research, they do pay us. But, but that is uh, folks requesting info from you. My question was, uh, if I recall correctly, you had a major effort underway to archive all of your records. Yes. And, and the intern was used for that, is that he, what it was? He did, he did the Goldwater Hospital records that last year because they were just 180 sets of architectural plans that had to be sorted. He did that, and uh, we have hundreds of records that have not yet been cataloged, or as we do, put it into no, put them into binders so they're findable. And uh, we definitely need an assistant to do this because the records come in very fast, and they're precious, and they're limited. And the more we get, the better. Off. I have to tell you that the Historical Society archive has more information than REOC, and we know where our information is. We are. We are the largest source of Roosevelt Island historical information that's easily publicly accessible any, by any person. You don't have to go, you know, you just call us up and do what we can to find it. And uh, before I uh, turn over to my colleagues, I, I, I can't discern from this if you have embedded in your request dollars that would bring an intern back on board. Is that, uh, so I might have miss, could, missed something. Well, it could, the $5,000 could, could be used. The 5000 It could be used, it would be a good project. The admin, 5000 It could be 5000 It would be perfect okay. for an intern, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, Judy. A uh, couple of questions. Um, I think it's wonderful, the historical society, but most of the people who are benefiting are off-island residents. How many people on Roosevelt Island uh, residents benefit? Are they able, are organizations able to go for walking tours? Absolutely. It, uh, is it utilized? Are I mean, are your know, services yes, utilized people, by people Roosevelt from the Island, Island residents? People from the island, they ask us to do tours for their friends, families, you know, their social clubs, things like that. Who benefits? Every single one of our merchants benefit. People walk off the tram, they come in the visitor center. They go to Starbucks, they go to Riverwalk, they come up Main Street, they go to the suites, they go to the gallery. We are a mecca for tourists. We only capture a small percentage. And we have to keep these stores in business. I mean, it's very nice that, you know, that the, the, the tourists come, but the tourists are very important because they bring, they bring more money into the community. And we serve the, we, We've done programs for kids, we've done programs and the for the maps. The maps, we give right. out maps, uh, I forgot to bring them, but we give out maps to the people who come. We we want the visitors uh, support, the, we can't run the kiosk without visitors. And that we employ five islanders, and we pay everyone. We, we pay everyone, and everyone lives on the island who works in the kiosk. Mm -hmm. And all of them are formerly employed professionals who at age something can't get jobs. So we are supporting five families. And we, that's it. I mean, it's very important to us to support the families, to support the employees, to support the community, whoever wants to do projects with us, we're more than glad to. And um, may I say, say like <coughs> two residents? Excuse me? Is it free or is that for a fee that is, for instance, if I wanted to have if my family come and do it or if I no, had it's not free. Okay, that's it's what I'm free. asking. It's not free. We charge our, we have a sliding scale. And uh, it cannot be free because we do not <coughs> ask our, our staff or people to run, to do a two or three hour walking tour for free. I mean, you know, we can't afford this. And I don't think it's proper to ask people. Uh, so the walking tours that we would be supporting are for who? Anyone. 
but they could be for Islanders, they could be for off Islanders. We get off island bus tours, people who come. I get a busload of 60 people, and they go to Riverwalk and have 60 lunches. That's and good they, for no, it, no, it's good for the entire island. It's good for the business community. It's good for Scott's Sweet Shop. It's good for anywhere. It's good for Wholesome Factory. It's good for when Travelers is here, it's good for Travelers. You have to bring revenue in to support everything. Um, may, may I say something here? Sure, Pat. It gets a little frustrating sometimes, I guess, because my first job was working in the public library. Uh, the historical society is, it's not sexy. You know, I, I, and this is not to denigrate any other organization. I mean, the Main Street Theater, I love it, and it's wonderful. But we don't put on shows of that nature. I'd say probably our current president of the historical society is the main conduit for so many people who come to Roosevelt Island. It's a cultural institution. That's like saying, can you tell me what your diversity is in our public library? Well, if it doesn't match your expectation, does that mean you won't fund it? You know, there, there is so much richness here. I mean, Judy said, yeah, they did the architectural drawings. Judy has a lot of material that is going to serve as a rich, a collection which, which she will be putting in exhibits for the island as a whole. This is educational. So anybody who has walked through the, uh, the Octagon Gallery with some of the photos of Roosevelt Island, you know, we didn't check their ethnicity, but this is a, an education, pictures of the Roosevelt Island in the old days, pictures of the books that were created which uh, are still available today. So, uh, excuse me, I just get a little frustrated. Um, yeah. No, I would add one more point. Oh, okay, hold on. Folks, All right. you have to be recognized by the chair, number one and number two, we're not in the audience uh, okay. uh, oh, yeah, phase you're right. at this point. <laughs> okay, um, Ava, do you have any questions, please? Yes, so, um, presentation. I certainly understand um, the need for your programs and for the funding for your organization, like the need to have an assistant um, and so forth. And I understand the needs for the visitors to have the kiosk and for organizations to have the visitors and so forth. And if you want to add to what are the needs for your programs for the island community, that would be wonderful. I Specifically, what you're thinking, what you said that what would happen if it would not be funded? You're saying you would have to cut back on the visitor center hours. You also say in an application, our goal is to continue to increase the number of days we are open. Would that happen if the grant was awarded? Well, if we have more money to pay people's salaries, absolutely. I, my, my staff, our staff does not work as volunteers. They are adults, they handle money, they handle credit cards, they handle merchandise. It's a business. It doesn't, unfortunately, doesn't make a profit, <clears throat> but it is a. It has to be handled in a way that uh, we we can pay of course pay our staff salaries and have we you know have it open. We in the winter we try to be open four days a week, depending on the weather. In the summer we're open six days a week, and uh, it's very important for us to stay open. Not good if there's no one there. Do you want, do you want to add um, something? What is the need in our community? Our community, we, we, we are going to do four programs in the library starting in January. Uh, and we've done these for years, uh, once a month, January to April. We usually do one or two exhibits a year in the Octagon Gallery with stuff from our collections, our archives, or art for some relevant subject to Roosevelt Island. Uh, we have worked with the child school before. We haven't uh, been in contact with them lately. We are just trying to uh, enhance our programs. We're trying to get a grasp on more funding because we need more funding, and your funding is one of some of it. One question. Um, you described the difficulty with the funding from last year to major cutbacks, and also in your application on the space where we ask you to basically list, identify some funding sources that would be a good prospect and relevant to your program. So all of those you say, this is unlikely that they will support us, unlikely to support, insufficient to support, and so on. 
So what is your plan for the future? Do you, did you find we anybody have, who might have support long, you? We have a very interesting new list of prospective funders, including a lot of our friends from the south end of the island. Um, a lot, you know, the, there are a lot of people on the island now that are making a lot of money from some new projects here. And we are about to, we are in the process of meeting them and chatting with them and making them support the Rose Island community. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Judy. Um, we're going to move into the audience uh, participation point, and uh, we could keep our questions crisp, not with a lot of uh, upfront introduction, just crisp questions uh, so that we can um, perhaps take as many as we can, and if we don't have any, then uh, we'll, the committee might take the time back, or we might ask an audience member to ask a second uh, question. Uh, so, um, I'm sure, by the way, Judy is uh, looking forward to uh, Cornell and its presence one day, and uh, that's going to increase traffic on the island, but you don't have to address that. Yeah, um, I'd like to call upon um, uh, Janet. Mm -hmm. okay. Could you tell us a little bit about that painting that's hanging Tell us about your relationship with um, island community groups like the Girl Scouts and your participation in Roosevelt Island Day and Fall for the Arts and Open House New York and Jane's Walk, which bring people from the island to participate in island history and which bring people off the island to learn more about us, to consider whether they might want to live in one of our apartments and, um, you know, and also visit the local establishments. <laughs> Besides shopping at the Good question. Thanks, Janet. <laughs> okay, we worked with our Girl Scouts last year and made, we made gorgeous posters for the Cherry Blossom Festival. We, in fact, there are pictures there of the kids. We did, um, a wonderful artist um, did pictures, outlines of our landmarks uh, at Fall for Arts, and we had the kids uh, color them in. Uh, she's the young lady who does the art in the window of the, of the sweet shop. If you walk in the lobby of the Octagon, you're gonna see this gorgeous painting, reproduction of Edward Hopper's uh, oil painting from 1928 called Blackwell's Island. The original was auctioned by Christie's. And when we heard about this, we went to Christie's, we offered them all the archival information on the building and the subject of that painting. They took the information, they published it in that catalog. They gave us a very generous donation two years ago. and they gave us a complete beautiful reproduction of the painting. And uh, the painting sold for $17 million, and it is now at Crystal Bridges Museum in Bentonville, Arkansas. But it was only because we connected with Christie's and said, hi, we can help you. And this is what the Historical Society does. So people who live in the Octagon get to see this lovely painting. Every year, Octagon has a Christmas party. We have our shop open, we do tours. Uh, of the building, uh, we do, uh, every year we do a cherry blossom walk, uh, weather permitting, we do a magnolia walk. For all the, most of the people who take these are residents. Uh, we have also done, uh, we may, with our library program, do a program in the library and then for residents and then just come here because people don't know about this building. You know, people come in here, what is this? Okay, I was in uh, Frederick Clark Lithers, 1889. There are so many things that we can entice islanders to on our island. And we draw them out, we get them to come to the library programs. We do, we've done a, a program in the library, then an hour later we do a tour. And this is what the historic, we want everyone to know and be proud of every building on this island. Anyone? Any other questions from the audience? Yes, ma'am. provided in uh, the Roosevelt Island book, which we published in 2003, which has sold over 3,000 copies. We have provided to the hospital libraries enlarged editions for the, for the residents to use, uh, large paint so they're easier to use. We've provided that, we've provided historical tours, we've done programs in the hospital uh, for the, through the recreation department. 
Uh, we've also worked with the, uh, some of the artists who are residents at Gold uh, Kohler now. We did a window with one or two of their with a few of their works this summer, and we're constantly trying to involve the Kohler community with the Roosevelt Island community because we're all one big happy family. Did you do a program with Bike New York? Yes, we did. I can't remember. We've done. We've met with Bike New York. We offered it. Every island organization is welcome to bring their materials and leave it in the kiosk. Uh, the, the Art Association, Riva has done that. The Main Street Wire is always available in the kiosk, and a lot of people know that. If they miss an issue, they come in the kiosk to get it. Uh, we keep up to date information on not only our island activities, but everything in the surrounding area of Queens. So if you want to go a Queens bus map, you come into the kiosk. We have Queens bus maps, we have Manhattan bus maps, we have subway maps, we have bike maps. We are a resource for all the islanders. You can come in and buy your Christmas presents, do your shopping, buy your mugs, buy your ornaments, and support the historical society, and also make it a place where islanders want to come and they want to, they want, I always have people who want to come and work in the kiosk. Um, we have another question, a statement. Professional writers in the society, uh, Bobby Slanevsky, has put, taken on this wonderful uh, magazine that comes out quarterly, and we've had three issues so far, and it's published on the internet. We have a few hundred people who subscribe to it, and it's a historical <coughs> article about Roosevelt Island, and it's been very successful, and uh, we we've, we've, uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed doing it, and it's had a wonderful reception, and most of the people getting it are Roosevelt Islanders. And you're welcome. What is the website? RIHS.us. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that uh, ends our session. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, we're going to now transition to our next presenter.